Hi, Chris here. I'm um, wanting to talk about heart disease today. We're going to do a series of videos here um, at True Holistic, um, initially about heart disease, and then the next video is going to be about cancer. Um, these two illnesses and diseases uh, seem to affect a lot of people that we know of and may be affecting people that are watching this video and listening to it. So I just want to talk a bit about it. The myths which I, I feel are kind of based around these illnesses of the way we currently look at it and go about the disease and about treating the disease and maybe looking at some alternative treatments uh, that can be at least harmful to the, to the body when we're treating the human body and removing these illnesses out of people's lives. So today we're going to talk about heart disease. Now, so heart disease, uh, in my opinion and from what a lot of the re um, latest research is saying is uh, it's caused by increased inflammation to the cardiovascular system, so that includes the heart, um, the arteries, um, the veins, capillaries, um, they're the main components of what make our cardiovascular system, so it's an increasing inflammation and oxidation. So you would have heard of things like antioxidants, certain food components and supplements you can take which are antioxidant, which prevent or reverse oxidation damage. Um, and also there's anti-inflammatories out there which prevent inflammatory damage. Now, it usually occurs through um, the lining of our blood vessels, or it could be our arteries, or they could be our capillaries, which are made up of uh, cells called endothelial cells. Now, the endothelial cells, they become irritated, inflamed, and become damaged. And some of the main culprits are sugar, um, processed oils, um, and trans fat oils, and too much omega-6 oils compared to omega-3s, and also toxins from our environment, also as endotoxins, which are toxins that are created within our body from other things such as parasites in our body. And within, this, within the energy work I do here at Truly Holistic, um, a lot of the culprits are, of heart disease are actually parasites which you don't really see too much within um, mainstream medicine, the way they treat heart diseases through um, re removing parasites. So I see that a lot within this work. Um, because the, not a lot can really go wrong with the heart itself, because the heart is essentially just a pump, you know, and it pumps your blood, your, your life stream, which we kind of look out, um, out in our world, which is water, and our blood is mainly composed of water. Um, and heart disease um, becomes a problem when things uh, get inflamed. For example, blood. Uh, thick blood is just inflamed blood. Um, and when blood gets thick, um, and when we get uh, mineral imbalances and so on, and toxins within the bloodstream, an occlusion can occur, which means there's a blockage um, with the flow of blood, which can create a heart attack. And if it happens up in the brain, then it creates a... Um, stroke. So in mainstream medicine we kind of look at heart disease and a lot of our focus is on our cholesterol numbers. And what I want to talk about cholesterol is that yes cholesterol is seen at the scene of the crime but it's not the perpetrator. So picture this. What I've just said with the endothelial cells, the lining of the artery, it gets irritated and gets damaged. Now, we need a substance that can patch that damage because a, a hole may be created, um, scar tissue may be created, and we need to patch that damage. And what the body actually does is send cholesterol to patch up the damage. So it's actually seen at, where it's at the scene of the crime, but it's actually gone there for uh, a beneficial reason, to try and patch up the damage. So... Cholesterol gets made within the liver, and you would have heard of HDL and LDL, and HDL was kind of considered the good cholesterol, and LDL the bad cholesterol. Now, LDL cholesterol is kind of the cholesterol that is sent out to certain areas of the body. So, you know, in the artery, on the artery wall, we'll see LDL, and it's kind of deemed as if that, if that, um, LDL is, is, is high within a blood test, then you know, cholesterol's been 
um, kind of built all around the body and it may cause an occlusion, which it can't. It can cause a blockage. Only because, only because we're not um, looking at what's causing the inflamed artery wall to become damaged in the first place. So us just focusing on, focusing on cholesterol, we're not focusing on the root of the problem, which was the inflammation being caused on the artery wall. What was causing that? And a lot of, a lot of times it's sugar from a dietary perspective. It's not fat. Where we're really focusing on our fat numbers, which cholesterol is based upon. So the heart. Now, as I said, the heart is a pump. And if the heart isn't allowed to pump the blood properly and the blood's getting blocked or obstructed, which can be caused by blockage or can be caused by the blood becoming thick, which is all caused by inflammation and oxidation, our body gets starved of oxygen. It becomes hypoxic. The heart becomes hypoxic. And when the heart becomes hypoxic, part of the heart muscle, because it is a muscle, that's the most important muscle in our body, becomes hypoxic and it dies because it needs oxygen. Another thing that the heart gets starved of is energy, which we call ATP. So ATP is energy, and when they get starved of energy, the heart goes into failure, which we call heart failure, or congestive heart failure. Now, a lot of the medications we use for re reducing our cholesterol numbers, which is are called statins, Simvastatin, Atorvastatin uh, are two very common ones that many people you might know of are on for cholesterol. Now what this medication does, it's actually, statins are actually, can work to a certain extent because they are anti-inflammatory. But statins um, reduce cholesterol. It reduces our body's ability to produce cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is very important for a number of things, like our cell membrane. If we didn't have cholesterol to build our cell membrane, we'd be just like a puddle of water. We wouldn't have any form to it. Cholesterol, we need cholesterol to produce sex hormones. And sex hormones are just not, not about you know, a potent aphrodisiac. Um, uh, sex hormones are life hormones. The hormones are big players when it comes to... Um, mineral ratios within the body and processes all out throughout the body. Very important hormones and sexual hormones are important. Testosterone for a man, progesterone, um, estrogens for a woman. Um, so cholesterol has a vital role in the body and it's very good for, you, for brain health too. Um, the, the, the brain is made up of, of, of a lot of fat and a lot of cholesterol. It needs cholesterol. So, okay, statins reduce cholesterol numbers, which is deemed a problem when it comes to heart disease, but we're reducing the need for cholesterol for all these other functions within the body, and that's where we can get into trouble. Another thing that statins do is they deprive the body of CoQ10, and CoQ10 is a potent enzyme in relation to ATP and giving the heart energy. So the statin, even though we're reducing cholesterol, which is deemed to prevent a, a heart attack or heart disease, or reverse heart disease within mainstream medicine, is depleting the heart of energy, which can only, over a long period of time, only cause problems to the heart and cause congestive heart failure. So... A vital thing for people if, if they want to continue on their statin drug is to be taking a CoQ10 um, supplement. Otherwise, um, you know, if you've got uh, symptoms of muscle fatigue, uh, of memory lapses or memory loss, then maybe you should be questioning why being on a statin. <clears throat> now, going back to the own, going back to cholesterol, and the only type of cholesterol that you may be worrying about is oxidized cholesterol and again you're only getting oxidized cholesterol if the cholesterol is just sitting there and it's continually built up because you're not looking at the root problem which was the inflammation and, and sorting that out okay uh, also um, within LDL not all LDL is bad like it's deemed to be 
It's just the small particle LDL. If you've got big fluffy particles, LDL particles, then they're harmless. And I'm sure you would have heard this with, you know, um, with diets for heart diseases that saturated fat increases your risk for heart disease. When really saturated fat, yeah, a lot of saturated fat is deemed got a lot of cholesterol to it. But again, there are a lot of benefits to cholesterol. And there are a lot of benefits for saturated fat as well. And at the moment, there's an epidemic with uh, coconut. And, you know, the rise of coconut as a health food. And remember, coconut oil is 92% saturated fat. So it's really saturated fat, the issue here. And also, what all, also saturated fat does is it r increases your HDL as well as your LDL. And the only LDL that it increases is the big fluffy LDL particles, which are harmless. A lot of the problems are the little LDL particles, and they can be an issue um, when you're consuming a lot of omega-6s and trans fatty acids as well, which are processed oils. Well, a lot of processed vegetable oils, to that matter. Now, the big fluffy particles of LDL, the particle, uh, the the uh, pattern A particles and the little LDL particles are pattern B. Um, now, another thing I want to talk about in regards to the inflammation. I've spoken about this in the previous video of inflammation. Uh, is the omega-3, omega-6 ratio. Now, that's one of the great predictors for inflammation in the body. And it's a great predictor for heart disease as well. You know, really trying to keep that ratio as close together. Ideally, anywhere from 1 to 4. 1 uh, ratio, 1 omega-3 to 4 omega-6 or lower. So 1 to 4, 1 to 3, 1 to 2 or 1 to 1. If, you're, if, that, if that ratio is getting higher with the omega-6, then you're causing more an inflammatory condition within your body and that's only going to cause damage within the cardiovascular system and increase your risk for heart disease or worsen your, your already um, uh, condition if you've got a heart disease condition already. <clears throat> so when I talk about inflammation being caused mainly by sugar and a lot of our way we're treating the dietary uh, heart disease is we're the mainstream we're focusing a lot on fat. I want to talk a bit about that. Many years ago, there were two theories. There was one theory by an American guy called Ansel Keys, and there was a theory by an Englishman, uh, John Yadkin, who was also a doctor. Now, Ansel Keys came up with a theory that heart disease caused, uh, sorry, that fat caused heart disease, and John Yadkin believed that sugar caused heart disease. At that time, Ansel Keys theory was accepted over John Yadkin and it, I generally feel that it's caused a lot of damage um, because heart disease, we, we haven't defeated heart disease, heart disease um, is, is an epidemic as it ever has been, it's worse. So <clears throat> if you've got heart disease out there, I really consider looking at the theory of why you should be treating it, you should be really looking at um, reducing your sugar amount uh, really removing as much as you can and uh, really looking at that mega 3 mega 6 ratio trying to stay away from processed vegetable oils and trans fatty acids trying to stay away from margarine butter is a, a lot better component uh, instead of margarine margarines have a lot of processed vegetable oils in it <clears throat> butter has a lot more saturated fat in it but again just, can, just reconsider the saturated fat kind of myth which I feel it is now, the last thing I'm going to do with this video is I'm, as here at Truly Holistic, as well as doing nutritional advice, do energy form of medicine. I'm just, for anybody watching or listening, you may feel this, because this uh, energy work works through uh, Skype and over the internet and from long distance. So I'm just going to get my energy tool now, and I'm going to point it at the string, screen, sorry, and it's called Heart Resonance. And it's a form of energy that is focused on the heart. If you're having any issues with the heart or um, any emotional issues 
with thoughts uh, um, regarding relationships and stuff and you're having trouble, listen to this video. You can watch or listen to this video any time and you'll get that same energy. So here we go. So to anyone listening or watching right now, I'll saturate and flood everyone watching and listening with the energy of heart resonance, please. Saturate and flood everyone listening and watching with heart resonance. Now this energy will work better if you're touching your computer. So therefore we can radiate that energy into everyone watching. And please um, put a comment down if you feel anything. Some people won't feel anything. It depends on how sensitive you are to energy. Now you may feel a tingling sensation. You may feel a warming sensation. You may feel a coolness. You may feel clarity. Saturate and flood everybody watching and listening with heart resonance, please. Just going to let that sit for a few more seconds. Saturate and flood with heart resonance. Saturate and flood everybody with watching and listening with heart resonance, please. Okay, again, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.